Amat Josie and before that the first track was Marie Beba. The time is now 11 minutes past 12. We do have Mr. Kuala on the line who is our lovely lady from Digify Africa that will be teaching us more and telling us more about the courses they offer and the digital skills. Mr. Kuala, can you hear me? Hello. Hi, can you guys hear me? I can hear you now. Uh, welcome awesome. to the show. How are you doing this lovely morning? Oh, it's afternoon now. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing great. It's a lovely day. I'm doing okay. Um, and how are you and your listeners doing? Oh, I think we are great. We are great. We're talking social media, which is kind of like your expertise, right? <laughs> so maybe just firstly introduce yourself and what you do. Okay, cool. Um, firstly, thank you so much for the opportunity. My name is Oli Elizabeth Sekwala. I am a project manager at Digify Africa, and I'm currently running one of the um, programs called Elizolam, which is mainly about cyber security for young people between the ages of 13 to 18 years old and educators. Wonderful. So you say you're from Digify Africa. So you guys are a company that mainly deals with digital skills, right, for young people? Most definitely. So Digify Africa, it is a youth-led organization. Most of the people that work within the organization are young people. Um, we are in the forefront of shaping Africa's digital future. So our programs mainly run in South Africa, Kenya, and Nigeria. And our mission is to just bring digital skills to young people across all communities through the various programs that we are currently running. Awesome, awesome. I love it. Uh, how, uh, so tell us, how important is a project, as an Elisa project manager, right? How important is this project to you and what does it entail? Um, for me, it's really, really important because we've got young people who are engaging on social media at a very young age and they really... Um, majority of them are not screwed up about the opportunities and the uh, and the dangers that the internet um, can pose for them. So as a program, we do go in and we offer um, sessions, one-hour sessions. We facilitate them online, but we also do work with some schools where we facilitate them face-to-face. -face. We do have restrictions because of the COVID-19 pandemic, but we go in and offer the sessions to young people, as mentioned um, before, they need to be um, sorry, the ages of 13 to 18 years old. And we cover topics that really um, these young people are exposed to. So we talk about public Wi-Fi, what are the dangers of connecting to a public Wi-Fi, cyber security, what can you do to protect yourself as a young person to avoid being hacked. We also touch on bullying and, you know, um, becoming good digital citizens because as young people, we need to be aware that how we engage on social media currently can affect our future, but also it can affect the next person and it, it can also affect you. So we need to try by all means to practice enjoying social media and not coming onto that space to harm other people, but also harm ourselves. Um, the one example that I normally use when I engage with the young people is that, that you know what you do today on social media is going to stay there for the longest time. Oh, so you yeah. need to be very careful how you curate everything so that it doesn't affect you when you're looking for your dream job or you're trying to go to that university, your Harvard and whatnot, because they do look at that. So, so universities I think, look, yeah. not just workplaces. I want to start off workplace. I didn't even know that universities can also look at your social media before accepting you. Yes, there are some because of their reputation. There are some um, where if you're trying to apply, they will try to look at what you're doing online and they will decide if they want to associate with that kind of behavior or not. Wow. So it's not even just, it can be something that follows you, that you can't even study something that you want just of one silly post. And especially, I love that, it's especially for the young people, because, I mean, almost all of them have, have phones these days. You find six-year-olds with a phone, I'm like, what does six-year-old do with a phone? But you find people, young people all have smartphones and 
consume most of their lives and their day being on, on social media. So I, I love this program that it teaches them how to act better on social media. Things like bullying, especially if you're dealing with the teens and those are very fragile ages where kids, kids can be quite tough, isn't it? And if it's on social media, it's even worse. Mm, yes, yes. And that's why, it, I mean, we do start, I mean, by 13 years old, people are exposed to social media. They do have phones. Um, but also, as mentioned, that this program is also focused on educators. So the curriculum that we deliver, we also try to deliver it to educators because they, too, engage with these young people in the classroom that's on a daily basis. point on that. You guys say you do also uh, train teachers so uh, how is it that you train them what is it that you're teaching a teacher in this program what skills are you equipping them with so it's more or less almost similar to the content that we deliver to young people but the tone and voice and obviously the direction is a little bit different it is for our older market um so with educators we try to teach them how to advocate for change using social media for an example about that would be maybe you want to um, start a shoot life in your school as a teacher. How can you do that? So you can tap into the that you have online. But also we teach them about privacy. We teach them about um, cyber security. So hence I'm saying the topics are more or less the same, but it's just, just the, 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 the different and, and the tone and everything. But because they are linked, it's always great for them to continue the teaching even once we have left the spaces. Okay. That sounds great. So now you guys are available online. So for now you're doing online sessions. Uh, so how do people get a hold of you if they're interested in the programs and want to know more and maybe make their kids enter some of the programs? How do they do it? Um, for me, I we are reachable. So they can go on to our website, which is Digify Africa with the C. So Digify D I G I F Y. Africa, um, yes, or they want to book a session. If you are an educator or a principal or a person that works with the mentioned target market, you can reach out to me on my email address. I am reachable on poly at um, digifyafrica.com. I am reachable on poly at digifyafrica.com, or you can call me on 061. Four double two zero five three zero. These sessions, as mentioned, we run them throughout the country. So uh, online has no boundaries. If you do have to young people, let me know. Let's impact the young lives, and let's make sure that we do teach them young, so that they are able to know that the internet is not something that you should be scared of. Instead, you need to teach them to know that it benefits you, but it also helps you in your career path. Okay, wonderful. So if you are an educator, if you do know young people that are interested, please, or you run some sort of an organization and you'd like Digify to come in and teach the skills, you can get a hold of me on digifyafrica.com. That's the website. Alternatively, email the project manager, Polly, at polly at digifyafrica.com.